both PDPs and ICE plots are used to understand and explain machine learning models. PDPs can tell us if a relationship between a model feature and target variable is linear, nonlinear, or if there is no relationship. ICE plots are used to visualize interactions. Now, at first glance, these plots may look complicated, but you will see that they are actually constructed in a fairly intuitive way. Hi, I'm Connor, and welcome to ADO. In this video, I will take you step by step through how PDPs and ICE plots are created, discuss what insights they give, and we'll end by explaining the mathematics behind PDPs. Now, understanding the maths is not strictly necessary to understand the method, but it is useful for understanding a method we'll discuss in a later video, Friedman's H statistic. This is a method for finding interactions and it builds on top of the concept of a joint PDP. Also, keep an eye out for next week's video where we will apply PDPs and ice plots using Python. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course where I give an introduction to XAI, teach you to build interpretable models and go into depth on the theory and Python code for model agnostic methods. We start with a step-by-step -step walkthrough of PDPs. To explain the method, we'll use a data set with details on the sales of 1,000 secondhand cars. It contains five features, including the car's age at the time of the sale and the car type. That is, if it is a normal or classic car. The goal is to predict the price using these features. You can find a link to the data set in the description. So suppose we already have a model that was trained on this data set. Yeah, we have one instance from this data set. In the last column, we can see the predicted price for this car. If we wanted, we could change the value of any one of these features. We could see what the predicted price would have been if the same car was 10 years old or if it had fewer repairs. In fact, we could do this over the entire range of a feature. Let's do this for one of the features. This line is created by varying the value of car age between its minimum and maximum value. We hold all the other feature values constant at the original values for this instance. We can see how the predicted price will change as we increase car age. Keep in mind, this is the relationship for this individual car or instance of the data set. But we can repeat this process for every instance in our data set. In the end, we'll have 1000 prediction lines, one for every instance in the data set. To be clear, for each observation, we have only varied car age. We hold the remaining features constant at the original values for the given instance. These will not be the same values we saw for the first instance. To create a PDP, the final step is to calculate the average prediction at each value for car age. This gives us the red line. This line is the PDP. By holding the other features constant and averaging over the instances, we can isolate the relationship with car age. We can see that the predicted price tends to decrease with car age. The relationship is clearer if we exclude the individual lines. This blue line is the same as the red dotted line from the previous plot. You may have noticed the short lines on the x-axis. So the deciles for this feature. That is, 10% of the car age values are less than the first line and 90% are less than the last line. This is also known as a rug plot. It shows us the distribution of the features. In this case, the values of car age are fairly evenly distributed across its range. Okay, that's how we can create a PDP. Now let's see what it can tell us about our model. A major benefit of PDPs is they can tell us the nature of the relationships captured by the model. That is, if a feature has a negative, positive, non-linear, or even no relationship with the target variable. Let's see how some of these are visualized by a PDP. Here, we can see an example of a PDP where a feature has no relationship with the target variable, or at least an insignificant relationship. It is the plot for the feature that gives the age of the previous owner. 
we can see that the partial dependence only changes by about $15 as we vary owner age. In general, if a model does not use a feature to make predictions, its PDP will be flat. If a feature has a linear relationship with the PDP, we will have a straight line that has either a positive or negative slope. In this one, we can see that kilometers driven has an approximately negative linear relationship with the predictive price. At the very least, we can see that the relationship is monotonic. This means that the predicted price always decreases as the amount the car has driven increases. Also, notice the rug plot for kilometers driven is less equally distributed. It is skewed to the left, which tells us that there are fewer instances with large values for this feature. As a result, there will be more uncertainty about the trend at these values. In general, we should be more cautious about the trends on the extremes of a feature's distribution. Here, we can see the PDP for the repairs feature. This is the number of repairs or services the car received. Initially, the predicted price tends to increase with the number of repairs. Perhaps we would have expected a reliable car to have received some regular maintenance. Then at around 16 or 17 repairs, the price tends to decrease. Excessive repairs may indicate that something is wrong with the car. Whatever the reason, we can see that the predicted price has a quadratic relationship with repairs. From these plots, we can already see some complex relationships. However, these are the average trends. We cannot tell if the relationship will be different for a subset of instances. This means we cannot tell if any interactions are influencing the predictions. For this, we need ice plots. So we've actually already seen an ice plot. It is a plot of all the individual prediction lines. We can get a clearer interpretation by centering all the individual lines. To center a line, its starting value is subtracted from every point on the line. This is why they all start at zero. After doing this, we can see that not all the individual prediction lines follow the same trend. We can see this clearly when we add the PDP. Most of the lines follow the general trend. However, some of the higher lines increase. This suggests that for those observation, price has the opposite relationship with car age. So we have a subset of instances that have a different relationship with this feature. This suggests a potential interaction. To fully understand what's causing this behavior, we can change the color of the ice plot. Let's use the car type feature. We make the lines blue for normal cars and red for classic cars. We can now see that this relationship comes from an interaction between car age and car type. Intuitively, it makes sense that a classic car would increase in value as it gets older. We can see how when used together, PDPs and ice plots can provide valuable insight into our models. PDPs can show us a general trend. Ice plots can show us how individual instances deviate from this trend. The methods do this in a way that is fairly intuitive and hopefully easy to explain to a non-technical audience. For the more mathematically minded, there is also a formal definition of PDPs. So we saw this PDP for car age. We can also write a formula for this feature. Let's break this down. F is the prediction function for our machine learning model. C is the set of features that contain all the features except car age. So XCI is the values for the feature in set C for instance I. So for a given car age value, we find the PD value by summing over all 1000 instances in our data set. For each instance I, we get the prediction using the given car age value and the remaining feature values for that instance. We then take the average of the 1000 predictions. This is the process we went through to find the average prediction line for car age summarized into an equation. We can see that it is really just a function of car age. So hopefully this equation is clear for this specific case. We can also generalize the PD function. This is the PD function for a set of features S. C will contain all the features 
excluding those in S. We now also average over N observations. This could be up to the total number of observations in the data set. Until now, we have only discussed cases where S consists of one feature. In the last equation, S only contained car age. When applying PDPs, we will show a PDP of two features. We will generally not include more than two features in S. Otherwise, it becomes difficult to visualize the PD function. This equation is actually only an approximation of the PD function. The true mathematical definition is given by this equation. For given values in S, we find the expected prediction with respect to the set C. To do this, we need to integrate our model function with respect to the probability of observing values in set C. To fully understand this equation, you'll need some experience with stochastic calculus. When working with PDPs, all implementations will calculate the approximated PD function. This is because the true PD function is not practical. Firstly, it will be more computationally expensive to implement than the approximation. Secondly, given our limited number of observations, it is only possible to approximate the probabilities. Lastly, many models will not be continuous functions, making them difficult to integrate. As mentioned, keep an eye out for next week's video where I'll show you how to apply these methods using Python. And if you are interested in the theory behind other explainable AI methods, then check out one of these videos. Also, Remember, you can get free access to my XAI course with the link in the description.